Hello, and welcome back to this series on AP Computer Science on Educator.com. Today's lesson is on algorithms, specifically the algorithm of iteration. We'll first talk about iteration and what it means, and then we'll look at two very common examples of iterative algorithms, one being finding minimum and maximum values out of a set of values, and the other being inserting values in order into a collection. And then finally, we'll talk about loop invariance. Iteration simply means repeating the same action multiple times over a range of values. So the most common method of iteration would be using either a for loop or a while loop. If you have a one-dimensional range of values, like a one-dimensional array or list, you can simply use a for loop or a while loop to perform the same action for each value in the set of values. So here's an example iterating over a one-dimensional array of strings called S. We have a for loop that starts at zero and goes to less than the length of the array S, incrementing i each time, and it simply prints out the value S at position i in the array. This would print each item in the list, or in the array, one time. We can use the enhanced for loop that we saw in the lesson on loops to do this a little bit with a little bit less code. In this case, the for loop takes a string, uh, which I'll call t, and it iterates over the collection s, which in this case s is an array of strings, and it simply assigns each string in the collection to the string variable t one at a time, one time for each string in the collection s and then I can call print line on t and print each string in the array that way. This loop here and this loop here are identical in terms of what is printed. I can also use a while loop. If I have a list of strings called a, I can use a while loop and initialize the variable j to zero while j is less than the size of the list using the size method, then I call the get method on list a and I get the string that is in position j of list a and I pass that to print line and print that out and then I increment my loop counter j. So this would be two ways of iterating over an array of strings or an array of objects this would be a way of iterating over a list of strings or objects. Those were examples of how to iterate over a one-dimensional set of values. If we have a two-dimensional range of values, then typically we use nested for loops or nested while loops. If I have a two-dimensional array of strings called S, then I would use, for example, two nested for loops. I have an outer for loop here that goes from i equals zero to s dot length, which is the length of the array s, and s dot length gives me the number of rows in a two-dimensional array. If I want to get the number of columns to use as the loop variable for the inner loop, I call s and pass in element zero and call the dot length parameter of s zero. This gives me the length of row number zero, which is the number of columns in a row. And I use that as my test condition for the innermost for loop. I go from j equals zero to j is less than s subscript zero dot length, number of columns, and increment j. And then to access the item in a two-dimensional array, I pass in the first dimension in a set of square brackets, and I pass in the second dimension in a separate set of square brackets. So this gives me the string that is in row i and column j, and I pass that to the print line method.
I can do exactly the same thing using two nested while loops. And as you can see, the amount of code to use two nested while loops is a bit longer because I have to explicitly initialize the variable to zero and increment the variable separately where the for loop did that automatically for me on one line. But if I want to use two while loops, I can do it this way. I have i equals zero, so i would be the loop counter for the outermost loop, and I go until uh, as long as i is less than s dot length, which is the number of rows. Within this outer while loop, then I have an inner loop, and I have j as my inner loop counter, starting at zero, going as long as j is less than s subscript zero dot length, which is the number of columns. I call system dot out dot print line, and I pass again the same as I did up here, the row number i and column number j of array s. I get the string out that's in that position, pass it to print line to print that. I have to remember to increment my inner loop counter within the innermost while loop that's controlled by variable j, and then outside of the inner loop, then I increment the loop counter for the outer variable i. So these are two ways to iterate over a two-dimensional array using either two nested for loops in the first example or two nested while loops in the second example. Either one works fine. The for loop implementation is a little bit shorter because of the, the work that the for loop does for you in terms of the initializing and the incrementing part that you would have to do separately if you implemented it as two while loops. Another common iterative algorithm is finding the minimum and maximum values contained within a set of values. And this could be an array or a list. If the set of values is not sorted, then the minimum or maximum value could appear anywhere in the list or the array or whatever the collection is. If the values are not sorted, the lowest value could be anywhere and the highest value could be anywhere. Therefore, we need to examine every value in the set to find the minimum or maximum, since we don't know where the minimum or maximum can be. It can be anywhere. So this is typically implemented with, again, either a for loop or a while loop, which are our two most common type of iterations. 